Hey parents and students, I know we're all dealing with this unprecedented event that is a daily struggle. I wanted to reach out to you today to showcase a new type of coaching I am launching. Going forward, I'll be offering live video coaching via Zoom. You'll have access to group golf fitness, group golf tutorials, and private lessons. Live coaching is very important because it is an interactive way to ensure that students are executing the proper form and fundamentals. We'll continue your golf training virtually. Here's a recent lesson I did with Super Bowl champ and Cowboys legend, DeMarcus Ware. Thanks. Okay, so if we look at the screen here, the uh, white line is the target line. Okay. And that's also this line that you see here in the trajectory on the left. Right. That's where TrackMan thinks target is. So the blue line is the club path through the golf ball. And you'll see that my club path was negative one on that last swing. And uh, on the one before was the last two were negative six. So when they're negative six or, or negative, that means my swing is out to in or towards left field. Right. Okay. So. So let's look here as I get up here to the top. I want you to watch my hands and my club. I'm going to really start to turn my body first. Look how vertical the shaft gets here. Right. Vertical meaning much more vertical than the original plane line. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of your, your baseball downswing that you're probably used to a little bit. Right. Uh, which, you know, you're, that's what you're taught, you know, baseball to kind of stay on top of it, kind of pull it a little bit to the left. And now the thing is, if you look at this is the second to last one that I hit, and you look at your uh, face to path is positive one, which is essentially zero. So if I swing to left field and my uh -huh. face is pointed to left field, then the ball is going to go to the left. Okay. And then the, uh, the red arrow that you see in the screen is the face angle. So you can see how those match up to, uh, you know, each other face and path. Right. So the one before we look at this one here uh, is kind of your typical fade or, or over slice to the right. We look at, uh, um, well, hit that one 162 carry versus 154. So when you slice it, it's going to go a little bit shorter, but still same path, negative six. Face the path is positive seven. So that means that the face was open seven degrees. So you look at the, the face angle red arrow here is basically pointed right at my target, but I swung the club to left field. So, so the red line that's on there is the club face saying that, okay, well, it was on that straight and narrow with that white line that's saying that's where, you know, where the hole should be, right? Mm -hmm. And if that red arrow goes a little bit to the left or the right, that means that my club face, club face came off of that line, and that's why I would probably be getting or shooting it a little bit to the left more or a little bit to the right more because my not saying that my club face was open, but it just wasn't on that straight path also. Yeah, I mean, ideally, we want to match the face to the path. Okay. So if, you know, you know, you can see the red arrow is matched to the target line, but right. my, my path did not match that line. Gotcha. But if I look, I'll show you, this is one that I hit. Uh, look at this one. This is a little bit more of a uh, ideal shot here. So this, uh, you can see the blue, red, and white all line up together. Mm -hmm. So this is your ideal uh, shot because, it, you know, that if you look at the trajectory, the ball goes straight. So that means okay. my path was uh, down the line. You can see as I'm coming yeah, I can in, see it. yeah. How how much more narrow I am here? Let's let's compare. 
instead of going straight down on one of them, you actually took that path that you came coming up, which was the right path, and then finished the right way. Yeah, and, and all the, the numbers and data uh, are more to do you know, with uh, downswing, what's happening in the downswing. Um, so look at uh, the difference here. Look how wide this is versus right I see okay so and I, I'm you know my tendency is to get a little bit vertical with the shaft coming down you know, probably more vertical than I guess textbook would show or, or require but even then uh, I'm still inside or, or positive on the path uh, meaning I'm coming from the inside, you know, uh, one degree or swinging to the right one degree. Okay. Uh, you know, and I think we've talked about this before in the past, but I use this illustration a lot. You think about a, a, someone that kicks a soccer ball or, or kicks a field goal, you know, typically a right-footed kicker always draws the ball right to left. And they, they're kicking the inside of the ball or or kicking you know to the right but their foot is pointed at the target right and so that puts a, a right to left curve on the ball uh and and moves the ball you know to the right to left or may, basically makes you know you you know have more speed and, and ball speed through the the shot or the kick so um you know what we've talked about is is trying to get you you know, to drop your hands a little bit sooner before you turn. And, and I think that can get you more from the inside. And talking about some wedge play and chipping, if we look at uh, this swing here, you're set up really well. You've got your, your hands out in front of the golf ball, which is good. Uh, a good turn you know i like this position here this is one thing that we've talked about in the past is really bowing that left wrist or flexing that left wrist uh -huh. to really get you a really closed or square club face at the top um you know similar to dj or or uh, brooks kepka they're really close at the top and um, they that allows them to kind of swing out to in or over the top a little bit and hit, uh -huh. hit it straight but in regards to chipping and wedge play and also hitting off a of grass outside, I want you to work on trying to move into your left side more. Okay, so gotcha. You're in your uh, baseball kind of squash the bug uh, finish here. Uh, let's see here. can see watch how my right foot actually kind of lifts up and moves here mm -hmm. right you know so what i'm feeling there is obviously all my weight shifting to my left side but my right ankle is kind of turning inward in in through impact there okay so if i when i start using you know really shifting my weight to the left side Mm -hmm. All right, I start finishing a little bit earlier, so now my club face gets twisted even further with my left hand, and it and it starts going way to the left. Like the draw starts mm -hmm. to go way to the left. So how would I be able to correct that timing now? Because I come with so much power from, you know, from the hips, and then as soon as I hit that front leg, mm -hmm. my hands are behind me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? My hands are behind me and I can't catch up yet. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that I can do to um, to try to get my hips in line with my hands? Because I'll have my hips locked out and I'm like, hold up, my hands haven't caught up yet. Mm -hmm. And then boom, it goes to the right. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the thing is when you hit a, a wedge shot or a pitch shot or maybe a shot that you're saying, 
I'm going to go at you know 50 to 70 percent, not full speed. You still have to make sure you release the club. Okay. So, you know what I'm talking about is you know we're talking about trying to get this right foot down and, and roll this ankle in a little bit so that you really get into your left side, but you you still want to release the club. Right. And if you're leaving it behind, you're gonna get stuck. And, you're not releasing the club. So Understood. What, I, what I try to do is I'll, I'll do a drill called the upside down swing. So I'll get the student to hold the club upside down like this. And basically, you're just uh, you know choking down where the club head is out. But what I want you to do is you're going to make your swing. You're going to roll that angle inward. And then you're going to get it to whoosh. And you've got to stop here at impact. Mm -hmm. Okay. You hear that whoosh. That's going to get you to feel that you're still lagging, plus still getting to your inside, or to the to your left side, or that you're, you know, getting that club to release. So that when you put the club normal and you get that release, you know, the club head is a lot heavier than the other end, obviously. So you're not going to be able to stop the club. If you over the gotcha. country, but you're wanting to try to feel that same kind of release and and then basically release it at a point into the target uh, so that you would get a, a punch shot. That. Well, what I want you to do is, is try to make make yourself feel like you're making a normal swing. But what we're trying to do is have this diagram on the right be your indirect target uh -huh. to get to the direct target. You know what I mean? So yeah. make your normal swing, just try to hit that. that okay. There. there you go. That was a really good one. Yeah. Instead of, instead of thinking about coming from the inside out, I just like you said, hit at the corner, and so that was at 208. Yeah, that was like maybe three yards off the mark. The 208 to uh, seven iron. Yeah, it was 208 with a seven. <laughs> well, um, you know that's the thing. Like, and you can relate that too to, to putting. Like, you know, most of the time you're going to have a putt that's going to break a little bit. Okay, so mm -hmm. mostly you're not going to have a lot of straight putts. So when you're putting, let me kind of give you an illustration here. All right, so let's say this front golf ball is the hole. Okay. And then I'm going to putt. Let's see. I can't really see that one. Yep, I can see it. There we go. Okay, so the front ball is the hole. I'm, this is my actual ball that I'm going to putt from or hit. And this is my apex or uh -huh. my target. Okay, so you would you know line up directly at that you know mark, and you're you're trying to hit that, but then of course the break would take over and the ball would break to the left in the hole. Gotcha. So that's kind of how we're trying to implement the, this uh, strategy when you're full swing is, you know, you're hitting it really well, you're hitting it really far. So we're trying to match up your tendencies and your ball flight to your alignment. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to line up that straight. You know, you need to line up in a way that matches up, you know, to your strengths or advantage yeah. to the shot and, and i can see that too when you said you know still hitting the ball from the inside out don't think about trying to go so far inside because when i went far inside it, it almost felt like i was going in a circle like this when i was hitting the ball and guess what that's what my ball was doing mm -hmm. instead of now just coming from the right angle like this and then the club face makes it go a certain way but finishing not over here but finishing over there at that angle, still going from, you know, here 
then when it finishes, it still gives a little draw to the ball and you still have, you're still in your power band. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what I've got here is uh, my golf ball, I've got the tee on the ground, and you know, we were talking about your face on swings. Uh, we tend to kind of hang back a little bit. And yep. That a little bit, so, which is fine when, you know, mid irons to longer clubs because, you need to sweep the ball, and especially with the driver, we need to swing up on the golf ball. So staying behind it a little bit is, is okay. But then when we translate it to a wedge or a sand wedge or a chip shot, we need to be down on the ball making a down swing. So mm -hmm. what I want you to do is you're going to hit your pitching wedge with that tee about maybe five, six inches behind the golf Okay. And you're going to make a you know, real short swing, try to hit it 40 to 50 yards, and you can't hit that tee. So if I were to swing and hang back on it like this and flip my wrist, I'm going to flip the tee and then belly the ball, probably blade it across the green. Okay. Yeah. So vice versa, if I roll that ankle in and lean the handle forward, and trap the ball more. You'll miss it. Get more flush, and it'll actually get up with a little bit of spin. Gotcha, okay. Okay. I would say maybe five to six inches. Oh, that's tight right there, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so narrow, look, hey, face the camera for me, so where, where you're standing. Okay, so I want you to, to narrow your stance a little bit, okay? All right. What we're gonna do is, I want you to kind of mirror me here. We're gonna, I may need to do this left-handed here so you can kind of get a mirror image. But I want you to really feel that your your knees are swaying. There you go, like that. Almost like your shins are tilted this direction. There you go. Yeah. Okay. When you hit this. I'll work on that. I've That's never done that before. And this drill will really help me out because no. I always thought that you say let, let's say if I had the club here, mm -hmm. right, and it's here. I always thought that I'm just scooping like this straight through. So if the ball was here, mm -hmm. I just would try to scoop it and just hit it when mm -hmm. I should be coming from here inside. You know, you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. If you think about, you know, if I wanted to hit this golf ball flush mm -hmm. like this. Well, where is the grip? Way out in front. Right. If the grip gets behind, then there's no way that I can flush the ball. I see. I'm going to belly the ball like this, or if I do catch it in the face, it's going to go straight up. Right. Okay. Or I could catch it high on the face like this, and it's going to be a little heavy and not go as far as I want. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we do want it to get up in the air. And I, I talk to people all the time. And I ask them, "Do you are you trying to get the club under the ball?" And they, they say yes. And I feel like that's a very detrimental thought because we do want the club to get under the ball, but you can't look at it like that. It needs to be coming in from the top of the ball like this. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, that's how you're going to ultimately. And then it pops it up. Yeah, and then it, it's going to create that spin and and uh, an ultimate you know control of the ball too. So perfect, perfect. But I tell you what, man, this right here has been it's been awesome, man, to be able to talk through this. And I mean, I know I got a simulator here, which is cool. But I mean, you can even do this if you're outside with your clubs. I mean, you didn't even you didn't even really get into the fitness lesson even yet, and I know that. That's awesome too, going through all the drills and you don't have to have an extravagant setup like this. Mm -hmm. This is like, you know, 10 on a scale of 10, but you can go all the way down to one to where, guess what, if I just got my clubs, if I, you know, had a couple balls where I can hit and I can still look at you and do some drills outside mm -hmm. that don't require me to go hit it 50 or 60 yards, I can work on a lot of my technique because technique is everything, right? When it comes to golf, golfing, 
And I think this right here is a, a great, especially, especially, you know, with this quarantine stuff going on, it's great to be able to still get the feel of either if you're outside or golfing and your technique, because if you, you always know if you don't use it, you lose it, right? Yeah. For <laughs> sure in golf. So. Oh, I know. And this, this quarantine is going to be over soon, and, and we all need to be able to hit the ground running, you know, when it's yeah. open and, yeah. and be able to play and, and keep our game up together. And, and that's the thing, like you said, I mean, if you've got a golf net at home, you can do this. If you have uh, foam or plastic balls, you can get in the backyard. If you have a local park that you can go to, uh, get your parent or, or friend to most likely probably your parent uh, <laughs> with you, yeah. but, uh, get them to video you and yeah you don't have to have a simulator you can do this and and we didn't even you know you hit three three or four shots on your simulator so we didn't even really use it it was more uh discussion and reinforcement of the fundamentals that right. was really ultimately the major benefit to teaching is, is hearing the information again and uh, and then knowing what, how to practice. Yeah, and I, I know it's not our last time doing this uh, this chat like this. This is just the first time, so I'm glad that I'm able to at least still connect, still be able to get those mental reps, but also physical reps through a lot of the drills and stuff that you've shown me. And uh, so I just want to say thanks, man, for, you know, staying strong, man. And I know we're at the house quarantine, but we're still going to be able to get it in and have a little fun. For sure, man. We'll uh, cool. tell the family I said hello and uh, keep swinging. All right, cool. Thanks, man. All right, appreciate All right. it. All right.